Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and right now let us continue with the regex character so what we are going to take a look at right now is the upper arrow characters and dollar sign characters in regex so open up your idle once again idle let me enlarge this import r e as usual and right now let us first of all say what those characters are basically the upper arrow character which is this one as you can see, I'm not really sure how to call it, but this character, find it on your keyboard. What it represents is it is basically placed at the beginning, at the beginning of regular expression, and it means that it will search for the pattern at the beginning of string. So let us take a look at the example of that. If we just simply specify our underscore regex equals re.compile, and in between the brackets, we will specify first of all are right here then in between the single quotes you use the upper arrow and then specify hello for example press here enter and what this means is it will search for the hello at the beginning of the actual string so if you just type here our underscore regex dot search and you use hello world you will see that it will find the actual object and it will match it with hello, as we can see right here. But if you try to search for the actual regex object in this string, which is going to be world hello, which still has the hello world, you will notice that it will not find any actual uh, match with this string right here, because the hello world is, or pardon me, the hello word is not located at the beginning of the string. So, same with the dollar sign, just the dollar sign represents pattern at the end of the specified string. So let's say we have our regex object called ends with equals re.compile. And what we are searching for is the regular expression that ends with a digit. So we can simply just specify backslash D, which stands for a number. And then we'll specify the dollar sign after it to let the regex or to let the Python know that we are searching for an actual number at the end of a string. So press here enter and let's search for it ends with dot search. Specify the string right here. The number of apples on table is four. Press here enter and you will see we found a match four. But if we use the same sentence ends with dot search the number of apples on table is four and then you add a dot right here you'll notice that it will not find any match because this actual sentence doesn't add with a digit it ends with a dot so that is something also useful to do now you can also combine the upper arrow and dollar sign to specify to regex that the entire specified string should be equal to pattern Okay, so that's also something you can take a look at. We're not going to do that right now, but you can do it if you want to. Uh, another thing in regex is the dot character, which represents the, uh, basically it represents exchange characters, or basically it can be any character. Now what I mean by that is I will show you right here, wherever you place dot in the regex actual uh, expression, it can be replaced by any other character in a string. Okay, so if you have our underscore regex, equals re.compile and there we have regex object that looks something like this or regular expression that looks something like this dot ad what this means is it will search for any word that has any character right here and ends with dot ad so let me show you if i press here enter and I go right here and type here our underscore regex dot find all. And in between the brackets, we specify some words that end, will, that end with ad. So bad, sad, dead, glad, mad, had. Press here enter and you will see that it found all of them, as we can see right here. But you will notice that this glad word right here only added or basically only uh, sent to the actual list this lad string because this is the only actual word that has four letters 
therefore it will only match the, uh, the letter that represents the dot. As you can see our regex object is basically, let me find it, dot and then ad. So it will only match with three letter words and also it will match with the third character or from back and then the ad. As we can see right here, all the other words matched correctly. correctly. Okay. Now, there are also some of the other functions that we should take a look at in the actual uh, regex. For example, the re.split method splits the string where there is a match and returns a list of strings where the splits occurred. Okay, so for example, let us use the split function in order to test this. I will close it and restart my idle. Okay, import re. And let's say we have a string that looks something like this. So string equals, and then we will specify 12 written with the actual words, then two dots or colon, and then 12 written by numbers. And then we'll also have 89 colon, and then 89 written by numbers, and then dot at the end. So our pattern is going to be backslash D and then plus, which basically stands that we are searching for multiple numbers or multiple digits. Let's type pattern right here. Pattern equals backslash D plus. This is our actual pattern for regex. And all we have to do is use our split function in order to print the result. As we can see the result equals re.split and we want to split it by the actual letters, you will see right here pattern, if we specify the pattern, and then the string, and we print result, you will see how the result will look like. Let me just see right here, why didn't it split it by comma? 12, and then this, 89, we use the backslash D. Yeah, that's because we didn't use backslash D. We actually use the uh, front slash or however you call it, simply just slash. We need to use backslash D. And then we can perform same thing right here. And you will see it will right now split it with a comma and add it into a list. Okay, press here, enter, print the result. You will see right now we have everything we need. So it split it by the numbers and then it basically removed those numbers and added only the strings into the actual uh, list itself. As we can see, we have 12, we have 89, as well as with the column, and we also have the dot that we specified at the end. Now, if the pattern is not found, the ra.split will return a list containing an empty string. Now, you can also pass the max split argument to the R split method, it is the maximum number of splits that will occur. So basically this split function will split it by the desired pattern. Okay. Now let us take a look at the usage of that max split. So we will have the same string right here. We're going to use it. Just let's say we add another number, copy this, paste it right here. And after the 89, let's say we have nine. Okay, just like this, we have the pattern which is going to be the same pattern, backslash D plus, and then we're going to have the actual max split to be equal to one, which is going to mean that it should only split uh, once at first occurrence. So split only at the first occurrence and the result will be equal to re.split pattern comma string and then comma one and this one is going to be the max split representation which as I said it means that it will only split at the first occurrence as we can see right here if I just press here enter and I try to print the result you will see it will only split it once as we can see right here we have 12 then it is a missing a number and the rest of the string is stored as a second element right here okay so simple as that. Now, by the way, the default value of max split is zero, meaning that it should split it by all possible splits. Okay. 
So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is a function called sub. Now the syntax of re sub is like this. So re dot sub and then in between the brackets to specify three actual uh, arguments. First one is pattern. The second one is replace with what to replace. And the third one is the string from which you are reading. What this method returns is a string where matched occurrences are replaced with the content of replace variable. So let us take a look at the example. Uh, let me delete this. We're going to have a multi-line string, for example, let's say the string is uh, string equals and we can define the multi-line string in a different way right now. Well, let's say we define it just like this, so ABC 12 and in order to actually define a multi-line string without using the three single open and close uh, quotes, you can simply just specify backslash right here and then go into the next line and specify the rest. So ABC 1 2 DE 2 3 and then backslash N for the new line and then F4 5 6 doesn't even matter. This is our string. Press here enter. If we print it right here you will see how it will how it looks like and right now let us create a pattern which is going to be this one so equals open single quotes backslash s plus and what this pattern basically does is it will match all white space characters so this pattern will match all white space characters now and we want to replace them with an empty string so replace is going to be empty string and that is something that we are going to use to replace and basically all we are left to do is create a new string and perform this sub function. So new string equals re dot sub. And there we need to specify three arguments as I said. First one is going to be pattern, which is the up the backslash s plus. The second one is going to be replace, which is empty string. And the third one is the string from which we are replacing. And right now if we print the new string you will see it will print out ABC 1 2 DE 2 3 F 4 F 4 5 6. So you can see it removed all the empty spaces and it replaced them with an empty string. Therefore, everything is now put together. Okay. Now, if the pattern is not found, the RE sub will return the original string. So right now you can pass count as a fourth number to the RE dot sub method. If admitted, it will result to zero. This will replace all occurrences. Okay, let us take a look at that one as well. So we have the same string, which is going to be this one. Let us just copy it. Paste it right here. So we want to actually have the same string right here. Now we want to match all white space characters as before. So pattern is going to remain the same as well as the replace is going to remain the same. But right now the new string, new underscore string is going to be equal to re dot sub. And there we need to specify the actual pattern. Now, right now we'll specify pattern, replace. We want to replace the string and the fourth, uh, the fourth element is going to be the count okay so we will set that to be equal to one and then if we print the new string you will see it will print it differently or wait let me check it out yeah it did print it differently as we can see we are no longer having this empty actual uh, empty spaces right here in between the abc and one two so what it means it only went to the first actual element it found and it replaced it with the actual empty string okay so you can also check it out whether it will work twice just by specifying the actual string and you can see it does work so you can specify how many times you want to replace we as a fourth actual argument to the sub function okay so that is also something to take a look at and right now we we'll to look at sub n function. The sub n function is basically uh, similar to the re dot sub, ex uh, except it returns a tuple of two items containing the new string and the number of substitutions made. So let us take a look at the sub n function as well. 
clean. Open up my idle once again. For some reason it takes a little bit longer to open. Let's go once again. Okay, so here it is. Let me close this one. Import RE and let's take a look at the example of using the sub n function. So we will create an, a, a, once again a multi-line string. So string equals abc12 backslash go to the next line de space 23 space new line character and then space f45 space 6. Close the single quotes. This is going to be our same multi-line string. We are going to use the same pattern which is going to match all white space characters. So equal to backslash s plus. We're going to have the replace string to be equal once again to the empty string. And right now we're going to use the sub n function. So new underscore string equals re dot sub n. And there we specify the pattern, the replace and the string. So this one takes the same arguments as the sub function. Just right now, if you see right here, if I print new string, it will return a tuple. And we know that it is a tuple by these brackets right here. You remember the tuples have normal brackets while well as the lists have uh, square brackets. And you will see that it will return the result as well as it will return the amount of times it performed the replace function. Okay, so basically that would be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.